welcome to the movies! This is a great movie, you're not gonna regret it. We're here in Victorville, California, future movie capital of the world. Home of the Victorville Film Archives. Who won the box office this week? Celebrating eight years of On Cinema at the Cinema, it's Tim Heidecker's On Cinema at the Cinema. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. Uh, I'm your host, Tim Heidecker, and uh, I'm get joined again by my co-host, Greg Turkington, here. Hey guys, good to be here in Victorville. We're back here at the Victorville Film Archives, or Film Center. Film Center, yeah. two very different organizations, yeah. both with the same common goal, which yeah. is to promote movies. Well, I'm begging you now, on behalf of me and my family and everybody, get the air conditioning fixed, because it's... Very warm in here. It's a lot more expensive than we anticipated to get a system that doesn't have sound that overwhelms the screen. Well, for at least these shootings, the temperature today driving in from Hollywood was 126 degrees out here. Well, I mean, it's hot in Hollywood too, so not it's just anything it's a like hot this. spell. Not and... anything like this. Uh, by the way, thanks again for watching the season finale of Decker Unclassified. I appreciate all the wonderful reviews we got, and it was really a pleasure to be able to do that. We're going to make more for sure. And, um, yeah, it was neat to get to work with James Dean, I'll admit mm -hmm. it, you know, he was mm -hmm. consummate He's cool. professional. He's a cool guy. He's got good stories, too. Yeah, and I'm glad we were able to uh, mix sort of the real world with the fantasy world and playing... As in Decker versus Dracula. Well, what I was able to do was hone that idea and make it work for the inside the Decker universe, because what you had done was sort of uh, disrespectful of the Decker uh, characters. No. But I made it seamlessly work, and we learned from our mistakes, and I think you learned from that mistake, and I learned certainly from your mistakes. You learned from my triumphs and took the ideas for your own triumphs, but that's okay. I'm happy to have been a part of it, and I know the fans really enjoyed seeing sort of the uh, unofficial conclusion to the Decker versus Dracula. Well, the two things have uh, nothing to do with each other. As stated in the episode, when Dracula sees President Davidson, he says the line, and this is important, he says, I've never met a president before. Ah, so nice to meet you. I have never met a president before. Yeah. Dracula! And folks, that's irrefutable proof. I'd like to see anybody question how the logic could possibly work. Because the character of Dracula has always been a little bit unreliable when it comes to the facts. Well, so no, I think the case is he would, closed. He might say something Do you like want to talk that. about movies today, or do you want to keep going on about this? Yeah, yeah, let's talk about some, some new movies. All right, we are starting with the great one, Mr. Woody Allen, coming back out with another movie. Uh, Cafe Society, starring Steve Carroll, Jamie Lynn Lee, Cheryl Lee is her name, it's Todd Weeks, and, um, I was, An ensemble and cast. Woody himself, I would assume, mm -hmm. is in this. Set, set in the 1930s, a Bronx na naive native moves to Hollywood where he falls in love with uh, his secret agent to the stars. That sounds like Decker. Interesting. So, I'm sorry, secretary of an agent to the stars. It's not, okay. Returning to New York, he's swept up in the vibrant world of high society nightclub life. So this is sort of two movies in one. It's always like that with Woody, though, in that uh, they're very funny movies, but they often uh, make a very serious point. Now, this is his hundredth movie, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he puts out a movie every couple a couple movies a year, and this one is as good as any others, don't you think? I mean, this was sort of his best movie yet to date, and uh, I predict Oscars for him as director. He has enough already, but he'll always take more. I was going to ask you, uh, this is interesting. Uh, by the way, I give it five bags of popcorn and a cup of soda. I was going to ask you if you are if you know offhand, we could look this up, how many Oscars he's won. It must They're be not, in the hundreds. Uh, they don't count them anymore. They measure it by the weight. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Let me put it this way. Woody Allen's house is sinking into the ground under the weight of all that Oscar gold. Well, Oscar loves Woody, and they keep rewarding him with the awards, and they, he's well-deserved because not only are his movies funny, but they're profound, and they're well-performed uh, by the actors. Always a great cast with Woody Allen. Mm -hmm. And that's no exception here. If you ever wanted to get out of directing, he could get into casting because he does a great job with it. Yes, and this is an original movie too. This is not a remake or a, or a reboot of anything. This no. is basically a new tale from the Woodster. And he it's is... a love letter to movies. If you like Clark Gable, if you like the old 30s Hollywood and you want to return there, but see it in color now because if you see old movies from that time period, they're going to be in black and white. 
this is the best of both worlds. It, it, it's truly a special movie, and I do give it uh, five bags of popcorn and 500 uh, wheelbarrows to carry all, all Woody's Oscars from uh, one home to the we next. You wouldn't be able to do the graphic of 500 wheelbarrows if you want to put something else. All right, in. five bags of popcorn and five wheelbarrows to wheelbarrow. That's fine. Just a small portion of his Oscar collection. Uh, from room More to room. Oscar gold in, in Woody's world than there is in Fort Knox, actually. Pretty interesting. Finally, today we have Jason Bourne, directed by Paul Greengrass, starring Matt Damon, Alicia Vikander, Julia Stiles, and Tommy Lee Jones, one of my favorites. Jason Bourne, now remembering who he truly is, tries to uncover hidden truths about his past. Now, I think it's kind of interesting that uh, the whole spy genre had kind of fallen by the wayside until we launched the Decker series, and now it's suddenly become topic du jour. It's the, basically, you wouldn't be surprised if every movie now has some sort of nod to Decker. Well, Bond never slowed down. That was always going. This one didn't have the chills and thrills that I was looking for in a movie, and I found it very confusing, and I didn't understand what was going on from moment to moment with the movie. Did you see uh, the uh, other ones? Well, no, I think this one was about as confusing as I could imagine a movie ever being. But I still did have fun looking at it, and it did have a car crash in it, which I thought was neat. And there was the element of surprise, because being confused is often very similar to being surprised. And you're surprised at not knowing what's going on. I felt like I was watching a movie in another language because of how confused I was. But whenever the guns were shooting and the b bombs were going off and the cars were driving around, that was always interesting to me. So I do, do, I do give it five bags of popcorn, uh, but no sodas this time. Uh, work on maybe providing some kind of uh, uh, info sheet at the beginning or some sort of... We'll just watch the other one, the Born Ultimatum. So. You know, I'm a little confused too, but for different reasons than you are. I'm confused why when you have a movie, The Born Identity, then you follow it with a Born Legacy, then you follow it with a Born Ultimatum. These are titles that are in a good uh, alphabetical order so that when you're filing your tapes in your collection, they go side by side. This movie's called Jason Bourne, so it's not even gonna be in the same room as the others that start with B. I mean, clearly the challenge was to come up with a title that falls after Bourne Ultimatum. I think that they should have called it the Bourne Victory or the Bourne Witness. Both of those would work with the plot as it was in the movie. I think they should re-release this movie with a new title. Again, the Bourne Victory uh, seems like the most natural one. And I think you'll see the box office explode if they do that. How many bags? Uh, I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn because it is an excellent movie once you get past the uh, shenanigans with the title. Uh, and then I'm going to throw in a, a little capsule. It's not a suicide capsule like you might see in one of these Bourne movies. It's an advice capsule and you unscrew it and there's a little memo in it that says, call your next movie The Bourne Victory. Okay. All right, we have a special guest we'd like to bring out right now who's going to talk about some new uh, exciting advancements. And Who's the guest? Come out. It's Dr. San, and he's... Hey, to, you guys. Can you move over? So I don't want him sitting here. We can move. He can sit here. No, just I'll get move, up. I'll move over, but he can sit next to you. All right, <laughs> welcome to the show. Welcome Thanks. to Victorville. How, did you have a hard time coming out here? No, it wasn't that bad. C terrific. So I wanted to talk to you, because this uh, doctor has got me on. I was talking to you last week about the challenges we were having writing the record, and... Uh, coming up with the creativity that we're, that's required to deliver seven extra songs. And uh, Dr. San turned me on to this amazing nutritional vape technology. Now this is something you are in partnership with, they're developing. Yeah. And this right here has changed the game for me. I'll show you how it works. It's just... Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. That is not only creatively stimulating, but it's providing me with nutritional basics, basically. Tim, so this was supposed to be a popcorn classic segment on I, the call sheet that I have. We're, we're getting to that after this segment, okay. but I just want to share, speaking of popcorn, this nutritional vape system that you've invented now replaces my meals, and I'm not required to no longer eat because the vape liquids in here actually provide on a molecular level the nutrition that I need, and then my body and blood gets to absorb it, and so I haven't, basically haven't had a bite to eat in six days. I've just been using this. Yeah, when you eat, your body requires a lot of energy to digest the food that you eat. 
And with the vaping, it just goes directly into your system. And this is pure nutrition. And you know, for like, for example, that would be like having a snack. But what's wrong with digestion? Well, don't you feel tired sometimes after a big meal? Yeah. <laughs> That's like a turkey dinner. <coughs> and you haven't felt any fatigue or feeling tired like you do after a big meal, right? No, absolutely. Yeah. I have more energy than I've ever had before. There's, and there's a psychoactive element in this, which is creating creativity and giving me the ability to write lyrics and music. And I, what, have you, what, is in, what is this? You know, it's like 21st century technology is sort of hacking the bi actual bio system. Is that what you were saying to me? Yeah, well, I tweaked a traditional Chinese formula that was kind of, I put some uh, Dong Chong Xia Cao into it, which is a so, mushroom. Um, I've lost like 15 pounds too. Yeah. From wham. Yeah, it passed like 72 hours. And the Ma Huang really opens up your lungs and will enable you to sing with your maximum potential. So my singing's improved and I wrote a lyric the other day, song lyrics, Se seven, or, seven or eight pages of lyrics for a song. And that's like gonna be a long song, but I mean, everything rhymes in it and it's really actually a good song. And it's a drone kind of song, so it's only one chord. Yeah, you just want to make sure that you drink water too while you're vaping because there's not as much fluid in it. I can see getting hooked on this too because it's not it addictive. Has, no, I know no. it's not addictive. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm saying is this stimulates so much. If I didn't have it, I feel like I'd turn into a, uh, like a zombie or something. But so I'm addicted to this, um, not in a literal medical sense, but I don't think I could live without it. And it's very convenient, and it actually has the time on it. Well, that's the temperature or the watts. And is this FDA approved? You know, things take so long when you include all of the bureaucracy. So we might as well. Like it has that immediate we don't buzz. Wait for them. There's an immediate buzz that's very intense, almost a pain. But that fades very quickly, and then sudden positivity and energy come flying through my brain at a very exciting, rapid pace. And I'm almost picturing a six dimensionality of co you know, common sense, human sense, spiritual sense, as you were saying to me yesterday as we were meditating. And he got me on a meditation zone perspective from using vape, nutritional vape technology that I can access. It's almost like having a key, like your Kingston character, Greg, from, uh, from uh, Decker, that yeah, you can but, unlock I mean, the codes just, that's of from brain training. technology. Kingston does that from training, military training, not from drugs. I'm full. It's like I just had a big box of Oreo cookies or something. I feel full and almost sick from it. But it does have a neat flavor to it, too. It tastes like watermelons and uh, grape soda. So thank you for this. Dr. Sand's been my guest. We'll be back next week with more Odd Cinema. Um, and Popcorn Classic? And a Popcorn Classic. Here we go. Cut to the Popcorn Classic as we go out. It's not how you do the Popcorn Classic. Yeah, it'll be as our, it'll no, be I sort have, of at, after the credits. We'll roll them after the credits from now on. Thank you so much for coming by. Sure, You're gonna yeah. stay here for a little bit? Because I want to show like you around to, yeah. the neighborhood. Yeah. Get a bite to eat or something. Well, not, not for me. No, I don't need that.